Yesterday we looked at the new var keyword in C sharp. This makes C sharp variable declaration similar to VB. After all, they've had the dim keyword for years, which essentially does the same thing. Today we're going to look at object initializers, which have been added to both C sharp and VB. Now let's say we have a class customer with a first name property, a last name property, address property, city, and state. Typically what we would do in our C-sharp code is we would write something like this. We would go customer C equals new customer and then to initialize each of the variables obviously what we would do is C dot first name equals Dave, C dot last name equals Bush, and so on and so forth. Well, with object initialization in C sharp 3.0, what we can do now is simplify this code quite a bit. First, let's use the new var keyword. Var C equals new customer. And now put in some curly braces and we can get rid of the dot notation there and use commas to delimit our properties and put in our closing curly brace and see what we have here is all of our properties being initialized and we need a closing semicolon at the end there and if you use the comma in here, you'll see that we have uh, IntelliSense for the properties that show up here. So we can do state equals CT. So that's an object initialization in C Sharp. We have a similar type of thing in VB. Again, let's start out with what this would look like in old fashioned uh, VB code. So we go in here and do dim. C as new customer. And we could do the code similar to what we did in C sharp with C dot but let's be good VB programmers and use the with keyword. So now we can say with C and now we can do dot first name equals Dave dot last name equals Bush just like we did in our C-sharp code. Very similar to the new object initialization in C-sharp. What VB's done is they've actually moved this up <coughs> as part of this line up here. So we can put the with keyword up here on the same line and then I'm going to use the line continuation character just to make this code easier to read, but you could actually put this all in one line. So we're going to do with and then an opening curly brace. And I'll put my line continuation character in here. And now everything else is going to look pretty much the same with the exception of we're going to do common delimited in here. And then instead of our end with, we're going to do a closing semicolon. And, oh, line continuation character. And a line continuation character here. And away we go. Now, I want to point out a few things about this object initialization. First of all, all the code that I've just got done writing here uh, in VB and the code that I've written here in C-sharp. This all compiles down to the code that I initially showed you uh, from the old versions of those languages. Uh, so there's two things that you need to keep in mind uh, with that point. Uh, first of all, uh, you can actually use this syntax in Visual Studio 2008 on your .NET 2.0 code. Um, this is going to compile down to exactly the same code that we've been writing uh, for the last several years. The second point I want to make is because it's compiling down to exactly the same code, 
it's still going to be slower to do this type of coding than if you were to use the, uh, a parameterized constructor. So, you know, my fear here is that some of these new features that they've given us in VB9 and in C Sharp 3 are actually going to make lazy programmers or allow lazy programmers to write crappy code. Uh, the point of object initialization is not to replace parameterized constructors. The point of object initialization is to make your life easier when parameterized constructors don't exist. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're writing your code and you'll get the uh, same type of performance. I can already hear the complaints now. Oh, C Sharp 3 or VB9 slower than you know, the previous version. It's not, it's not slower, you're probably writing the code wrong.